Here at CIMH, I work with a great group of climate and sectoral experts to co-design, co-develop, and co-deliver tailored climate information products and services for six climate sensitive sectors in 16 Caribbean countries. Many of these climate information products provide practitioners with information that helps them to understand recent and expected climatic conditions and their potential impacts throughout the Caribbean. Other products disseminate more tailored climate smart advisories in the form of sector specific bulletins for specific climate sensitive sectors like agriculture, health and tourism. Through these products, we're helping farmers to minimize damage and loss to crops and livestock due to drought and floods. We're also helping water managers to monitor and predict available water, helping them to better manage water demand from multiple sectors. We're helping health practitioners across the region estimate the effects of climate on respiratory diseases, gastrointestinal diseases, vector-borne diseases, as well as non-communicable disease and general well-being and mental health. We're also helping many hoteliers to map where and when climate conditions may disrupt outdoor activities and estimate their cooling needs. We're helping the energy sector to allocate resources to support dam management for reliable hydropower generation all across the Caribbean or in, in, in islands where it, and territories where it matters. We know that these products reach hundreds of sectoral practitioners, helping them to make better decisions that manage climate risks and take advantage of climate related opportunities. And we continue to work on new products too, such as a heat stress early warning system for Caribbean poultry farmers you may or may not know that poultry products uh, supply more than 57% of the protein needs of Caribbean people. It makes a major contribution to nutrition and good health in the region. And so a product that safeguards poultry supply in the Caribbean or helps to safeguard that would be very important. We're also investigating the possibility of providing a forecast to tourism policymakers that helps them to capitalize on marketing and revenue opportunities that can arise from colder than normal winter conditions in the UK, US or Canada, or alternatively from unfavorable climate conditions in other world regions like Southeast Asia that compete directly with the Caribbean. These are some of the many evolving climate risk management success stories right here in the Caribbean. I think it's an exciting time for our region and for our climate uh, services program as we continue to expand our products and services to climate sensitive sectors. But how did we get here? What makes all of this even possible? Well, in a nutshell, it's due to the long-term commitment of the Caribbean climate community to invest in building out the many components of climate early warning information systems for over 50 years now. In fact, as you can see on this timeline, the region has been working on building its climate capacity since 1967. As a repository for the region's climate data archive from the beginning, the CIMH has been facilitating the delivery of quality controlled climate data for over five decades now. Since 2000, the climate data sets that have been produced through this activity have spanned a sufficiently long period to enable delivery of other services beyond data. And so in 2007, the Institute made a strategic decision to increase the range of climate services it provided to the region, which led to the establishment of the Applied Meteorology and Climatology section, which was in fact tasked with the broader mandate of converting climate data into climate products and services for an expanding climate base. 
and this climate base now included climate sensitive socioeconomic sectors that were seeking targeted climate services and products to enhance their decision making processes. In 2009, something else very important happened. We established the Caribbean Drought and Precipitation Monitoring Network, followed closely in June 2010 by the re-establishment of the Caribbean Climate Outlook Forum. These two groupings of technical experts, which are drawn from the National Met Services, as well as the Caribbean Regional Climate Center, are the bedrock mechanisms for climate monitoring and seasonal climate forecasting in the Caribbean. It's actually the work of these operational networks that were established over a decade ago that make the development and delivery of our technical products possible today. Over time, we've built our capacity to serve climate sensitive sectors through several keystone projects like the Caribbean Water Initiative, which ran from 2006 to 2012, as well as the three year Caribbean Agrometeorological Initiative, which started in 2009. Uh, these were two major attempts by CIMH to start interfacing closely with both the water and agriculture sectors to provide weather and climate services. More recently, under the 2014 to 2017 Building Regional Climate Capacity in the Caribbean program, CIMH has strengthened its relationship with lead technical agencies responsible for many more sectors, six of them the agriculture, water, disaster risk management, health, energy, and tourism sectors in a partnership to co-design, co-develop, and co-deliver user-driven climate early warning information. This partnership is embodied in the Consortium of Sectoral Early Warning Information Systems across climate timescales coordination partners. Established in 2015, the consortium has been instrumental in developing quarterly bulletins, which are actually joint bulletins, that provide a broad overview of climate conditions and communicate sectoral implications up to three to six months in advance. We've been co-delivering these new products since 2017, and I think that has been an excellent initiative. Now, since 2018, with the help of the pilot program for climate resilience, we've been working to ramp up the development and delivery of sector specific climate information at the national level. And this has been going quite well with new climate information tailored to sectors being developed in several countries. Now the next decade promises to be an exciting one for Caribbean climate services as CIMH and the National Met Services in the Caribbean continue to partner with regional and national sectoral agencies on the development of more complex sector-specific products that integrate climate and sectoral variables. This will, of course, require new ways of working between the climate community and sectors. And the framework to facilitate this new kind of co-production is enshrined in the regional roadmap and plan of action, which will be implemented over the next decade, from 2020 to 2030. What's beautiful about the roadmap is that consortium partners have co-developed it to support the development of the next generation of user-specific and actionable climate information products. <music>